Have you ever wanted to add something extra to your three yard quilt? What about embroidery? Hi, it's Charity with Fabric Cafe, and I am here to show you more ways to spice up your three yard quilt. I'm gonna cover some embroidery, and I love embroidery and including it in my quilt because it really just adds a little pop. You can make it a statement, or you can make it subtle. I'm gonna teach you four basic stitches today, three transfer methods, and ideas on how to use them. We're gonna start with Time Machine. I really enjoy this quilt for embroidery specifically in mind. I picked it because we have all these half square triangles surrounding our focus block. This focus block is so awesome to really pop with what you wanna highlight in embroidery. Let's get it over here and look at it a little bit closer. What we're gonna cover with our time machine quilt is we are gonna show you some back stitching, how to incorporate sentimental messages, and why I used a printable adhesive washable stabilizer for this method of transfer. Now you might notice the fabric positioning is a little bit different. Let me show you my fabric and what I did to really make this a great quilt for embroidery. Here's our number one fabric. It is a cute, cute, cute focus fabric. It has birds, it has flowers. I mean, I love flowers. I'm such a sucker for flowers. And it's got such great, a great palette. You've got dark, light, the birds and the flowers really go well together. So this is our number one fabric. Traditionally, in our three yard pattern, it is gonna go right here. It's gonna be a big pop. It's gonna stand out. And it's gonna also have these complementary half square triangles, making it a real focus piece. These half square triangles are gonna be in this fabric, right here surrounding our focus fabric. You also notice some other half square triangles. These are our number two fabric. Let me show you an image of what this fabric looks like. It really is so beautiful. I love the contrast between the oranges, the yellows, the dark blue, the light blue, in mixed with our number three. It really makes such a sharp, standout, unique design. Let me show you how I swapped our number one and our number two fabric to really make this a palette perfect for embroidery, to capture those memories and to give you a space to make your embroidery the star of this quilt. So if you are wanting to create a perfect palette for your embroidery, let me suggest switching your one and two fabric in this kit. The kit is called Mother's Memories. The pattern is Time Machine and it comes from our book, Easy Does It. Let me go over what you're gonna need to start your embroidery journey. So this is the design I picked for my Time Machine Memories quilt. This is a sweet sentimental message written by a little five-year-old that apparently loves me and <laughs> I make her happy. This is a really great, it has so much character, all the unique handwriting, the little cute punctuations. This one was just so happy. I had to use it as my example. The transfer method that I used, a pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory, but I'm gonna show you why I love this. It is a stabilizer and you can print straight on it, but it washes right off your fabric as if it never was. So you get like, one stop shop, bang, all of it. This one is so great. Put it in your printer, it runs your design right on it and it can be added straight to your fabric. The embroidery floss that I chose to embroider this design. This is a DMC brand. It has been around since the dawn of time. It is a great quality, easy to find at your local craft stores. It will not bleed. I have used it in multiple projects that have been washed regularly. It doesn't, I'm not seeing any fading. I'm not seeing any bleeding. And this is really important when you're picking your flosses to make sure it comes from a reputable brand because the last thing you want is your memory quilts, your extra personalizations bleeding into your fabric and kind of muddling it and taking away from the special effects. Needles are really a personal choice. You have a wide variety of sizes. The eyes are, are different sizes. The lengths are different sizes. Also, another thing that you can check out at your cr local craft stores, you can check out their assorted packs. They have many different lengths, eye sizes, and really depends on your personal preference as well as how many strands you are using to embroider. And last but not least, very essential, your embroidery hoop. 
I chose this size because it encases my ent entire design. It, the design was put onto the computer and shrunk down to fit our block as well as my hoop. I'm gonna show you how we took this and ended up with this. I took this, scanned it into my computer, put it in a Word document, and I sized it appropriate to what I wanted in my finished block. This is our stabilizer, our sticky, washable stabilizer. This is what it looks like when you have printed it out with your design sized and ready to go. I am going to show you. I added a little color. Again, it'll all wash out so that you can see the shape and the size that I went with. So this transfer method is as simple as peel it off and place on your block. It is that easy, guys. One thing I love about this transfer method is if it's not right where you want it, if it's not completely centered, or you decide, mm, I don't like it on that block, I'm gonna move it to a different block, you can take it off and you can reposition it however you like. This is a wash off stabilizer. I'm gonna share a little tip from my personal journey in embroidery on my quilt is please make sure you've completed the entire quilt top, you've completed the entire quilting process before you wash off this stabilizer. The stabilizer is still present. You can't see it as well because I didn't add color to it when I created this sample. But as you can see, this cute little mark, it is present in all of our designs. I, unfortunately, it's a trial and error. <laughs> I created my blocks, washed them, hoping that it would have a clean palette for quilting, and guess what? My entire quilt whoop, disappeared. <laughs> it shredded. It was heartbreaking. I can laugh about it now, but it is an, a great opportunity for me to share things that you can avoid in your embroidery journey. This is our floss as it comes. When you get your pack, it has six threads, and it comes nice and bold. You can do a lot with six threads. It makes a big statement. It makes your embroidery pop. I also want to show you that you don't have to use all six threads. You can use five, you can use four, you can use three, two, and one. This really can dictate how loud that design stands out and how prominent it is. My favorite way of finding the threads that you'd like is I just tap it. I start at the top and I tap until we get a little bit of a crazy hair and then it makes it much easier for you to decide are we taking two, three, or four threads or all six. This is a great way to separate your threads from your total floss to decide what you want to use for your design. This is our back stitch. What you're going to see here is a completed design. This is what it's going to look like. And let me show you a little more detail on how it goes about. This is the needle that I chose. I have all six threads in my floss. I chose to keep them all, and I wanted to show you my needle. This is a very long, very sharp embroidery needle. It has a nice, easy to thread eye that is perfect for all six threads when you're working with embroidery floss. Let's start by, we're gonna follow the line. This is as simple as taking your needle and going behind, I like to apply a slight amount of pressure so that I can find my line and where my needle is located. We're gonna come through just ahead of where we're gonna come back to, and that's why it's called backstitch. We're gonna pull all the way through. And then we're gonna meet right back where our other stitches are, right on top, and pull all the way through you can make this stitch as big, as small as you want. We can even go very, very tiny little back stitches. I just made a very large one. You can go even smaller. This is really up to your preference and what look you would like with your back stitch. I just want to show you how the back stitch is used in this design. It is as simple as tracing those letters just like I showed you with the stitch tutorial, over each little punctuation point in each letter, creating this unique one-of-a-kind keepsake design. 
Let's look at the rendering of where I place this embroidery on our image. This is such a great pattern once again. If you have a bunch of grandkids, if you have grandparents messages, if you have handwriting that just brings so much joy to your life that you want to commemorate and create such a beautiful keepsake, this is a great design. This is our crystalline pattern and I chose this for an embroidery design because of our half square triangles really drawing our eye into the center and creating a perfect palette for our design today. So crystalline is such a great quilt for this design. I'm gonna show you how to transfer from an iron on pin. It again is a wash away. We have our different stitches that we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover the lazy daisy. We're gonna cover a stem stitch and a French knot to build on our back stitch. So the fabrics we have for the crystalline is this is our number one. We have a great blend of colors. We, our flowers are in several different colors. We have different blooming states, different depths, the green, the floral, the blue. It looks so amazing in our number one spot. It is such a pretty whimsy feel. We have our number two fabric. It is, yet again, a great blank canvas for our embroidery and it's such a great place right here in our star and our other complementary blocks around our focal block. And our number three, I picked something with a little bit of a pop to really bring out the pinks and our flowers because I mean flowers, it does make you think of pink. This, this fabric also has some darker contrast. We have yellows. We have dark pink, we have light pink, and we even have white. So it really plays well together when you have two different patterns in our number three position. This crystalline pattern is so happy with this blue fabric and this pink. It is such a beautiful, beautiful palette for our embroidery design that we're gonna show you. This kit is called the Flower Gazing. It is the pattern crystalline, and it comes from our book, Make It Modern with Three Yard Quilts. So let's go over what we need for this. This is our embroidery design that we are gonna be working with today. It was created specifically for Fabric Cafe. We're gonna have our transfer method. This is an iron pen. Please don't use steam when using. You trace your design and it is transferred straight onto your fabric. We have our embroidery floss that I chose for our design. This is variegated. I really enjoy the variegated threads when we're doing florals, when we're trying to add a little dimension and a little depth. It kind of changes up our colors so it's not so flat. Here is our design for our crystalline embroidery. This design I created specifically for Fabric Cafe and for this embroidery tutorial purpose. This image was drawn and scanned into my computer. I transferred this image into a basic Word document, blank, and you can adjust the size based on your finished block and how you want to place it. After you have adjusted the size, you will click the image, hold down your click, and you're gonna drag and it will reverse giving you a mirror image. So when it is transferred, it will be facing in the correct direction. The piece of fabric that I have selected here is the area on the crystalline that I would embroider. This design, as you can see, has been adjusted to fit this space. I'm not gonna trace the whole design today, but I do wanna show you how simple this method is. It is as simple as opening your pin. Don't press too heavy because you will get a really bold line, but it's as simple as tracing your block tracing your whole design and picking your spot. And ironing in place. Again, make sure your steam feature is off. Now, because this is the design that I used when creating my embroidery pattern, you might see some transfer of other designs, not just my block that I traced today. Let's take a look. As you can see, the block that I retraced is there. And this, it, there is still ink from when I originally traced it for my design. But you can see how proud and loud it shows up for your embroidery. Now that I have showed you how we transfer this, I'm gonna teach you the stitches that I used to create this design. 
I also encourage keeping your design handy. It also helps keep it for reference as you stitch. So here is our stem stitch. This is a great stitch to use when you have movement in a plant, a line, and you just don't want that straight, stiff back stitch. You want more fluidity. This is what it's going to look like finished and completed. The beautiful thing about this stem stitch is it really moves with your line as much or as little as you want. Again, this stitch is adjustable for the size of the stitch that you are looking for. You're going to, as you notice this thread, our starting point is not quite in the middle of our starting stitch and it is going to go right through the bottom of our line. It's going to not quite stack, but it will give a little bit of a movement with our stitches. And once again, you want your needle to come out at the top. Your starting point will be at the top of this line and you'll be finishing towards the bottom. And it will create lovely movement with this stitch and create a much softer line than our back stitch provides. I am currently stitching with three threads. It creates a little bit of a smaller line, still bold, but not quite as bold as our six threads together. As you can see, this is a very simple stitch and it really builds on our back stitch, creating a much softer look. Let me show you my needle, the opening. It's a little bit smaller than what we started with with our six threads. The needle's a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter. When we're working with less threads, you don't need quite as prominent and large of a needle. So our next stitch that we're covering is the French knot. This is a really versatile look. As you can see through my examples, we can go as big as this and even, even little. This is two threads and based on the tightness at which you secure this stitch, it really can dictate the size of your French knot. I'm going to come through right on our line. Obviously, as you can see from above, I chose not to stay in the lines. It's kind of how I like my embroidery, a little bit of everywhere. So we're going to take our thread. You're going to need both your hands to complete this stitch. Our needle is going to face away from our fabric. We're going to loop around twice. Please keep a good, snug, tight pull on this. You want to keep tension while you're completing this stitch. You're going to come back, not quite in the same spot, but pretty near our starting point. Maintain that tension. I'm holding the hoop with this hand as well as my thread. I'm going to come underneath and I'm going to just lightly pull my needle back through the center of that little loop and it will complete our French knot. As you hold your tension, it's going to make sure that our knot has a nice snug finish right against the fabric. Now, if let's say if I lose my tension and I'm not holding my thread quite as tight, you're going to end up with a little bit bigger, a little bit looser knot. The way you can go for a bigger French knot is you can add more threads. I'm working with two. You can add all six if you want a big, chunky statement. You can go all the way down. I wouldn't recommend go, going smaller than two because then you're really dealing with the same threads as your fabric and there is a chance that your French knot potentially could go right through that fabric weave. Something that will help while creating the knots is making sure your eye is a little bit thicker and a little bit larger than your thread count so it's creating the hole it's creating that path for your thread to follow with minimal resistance. This is our Lazy Daisy stitch, which is incorporated in this embroidery design. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways your Lazy Daisy can turn out depending on your needle entry. As you can see, this is a little bit more open of a puddle. This one's a little bit shorter. We got a half of, half of a flower. We have a whole daisy, and then we just have some simple chains. To start our lazy daisy, we're going to pick our starting point, just like with our others. We're gonna have our needle come through the fabric. 
we are going to put our needle almost exactly right back where we where we came through. Now we have a nice little loop that we're working with right here. How big do we want our petal? We could have it this big. We can have it as small as you like. It's really dictated by where you place your needle for the third point. You want to loop your fabric over your needle. You're going to pull taut, not tight. You want to give a little resistance. If you pull too tight, I did this stitch for you. This is what happens if you pull everything too tight. You lose the shape of that petal in the process. For our next petal, we're just going to come up right where we started to begin with. And we're going to place our needle back through at that same point your petals all can be different sizes. Nothing is symmetrical and perfect in nature. This is the beautiful thing about embroidery. There is so much beauty in perfectly imperfect. I love when things aren't exactly perfect. Now if you find that your petal looks a little droopy, you can take the eye of your needle and just tease that thread, creating a little more shape to that petal. Let's say that I'm done with our design. Let me show you how to tie this off. This is the back of my embroidery hoop. We got a lot of threads going on. And so we are going to take our needle and we're just going to go right back underneath. Do not penetrate your fabric. We're going to go right back underneath our threads and we're going to make a nice little loop. I like to get it a little closer since I'm coming from this point to this point. I don't want to create tension on the other side of my hoop. So I'm going to create a loop there. I'm going to go through that loop and pull it tight. Not creating tension in the threads, but I'm pulling it snug. And I'm going to do this about three times just to ensure my embroidery is on lock. I have put together some free goodies for you. I have a simple design and a breakdown of each one of these stitches for your visual reference while you are creating your design. I cover our back stitch, our stem stitch, French knot, and lazy daisy. There is a diagram showing you exactly where your needle needs to come through and go back through your fabric. It is a great visual support while you are embarking on your embroidering. Our second free goodie is our design that I am showing you on the crystalline pattern. This is called Always Flowers. I created it just for you guys. It is color coded showing you exactly which stitches go where. We have our back stitch, our stem stitch, our lazy daisy, and French knot. This design we are offering both forward facing and mirror image so that you can use either transfer method that we so far have discussed today. We have a stabilizer method which you would you want to use your forward facing design and if you're going to do your iron transfer pen that is going to be used with the mirror image design. Make sure that you're resizing this depending on your finished block size and the area that you have in mind for this design. All these free goodies are available at fabriccafe.com and check under our free goodies tab to find them. So all of our stitches right here for you to see. We have our French knots, we have our lazy daisies, we have our stem stitches, and we have our back stitches. I don't know if you guys can see this on our image, but we have a little shadowing. As you can see, this again will wash out. It will disappear once your quilt has been long arm quilted, it has been finished, and it has been washed. I again recommend waiting until it's all quilted before we do any fabric washing. Let me show you the image of what this embroidery looks like placed on our quilt pattern. If this is a little intimidating for you, but you still want to start, this is also a great option for pillows. We do have a free goodie that shows you how to take our three yard quilts and put them into a pillow design. You can find that at fabriccafe.com as well with our other free goodies. Our last quilt we have today is the Bitty Bungalow. I love how quaint and the possibilities for this pattern. It is so much fun because it's a great way to commemorate your houses if you move around. Let me show you what I did to personalize this quilt. 
The fabric we have for this quilt makes a great foundation for embroidery. We have a nice blue, very crisp, very bright. It's gonna go in all of our number one spots. It's gonna be great for embroidery since it really doesn't have a lot of visual distractions with a big design. We have our number two fabric. This is a lot of fun, a lot of color, but it's very subtle and it really helps bring our houses out and about. It makes these bitty bungalows really pop. And then we final our three is this really beautiful green. It goes so well with our blue and it is gonna be in every single one of these spots and it's gonna make the embroidery so beautiful with these crisp colors. Let's look at this design and so you can see exactly how great this is. All of these colors go so well as such a great foundation for our embroidery to come. We're calling this kit the Cottage Whimsy the pattern is Bitty Bungalow, and it is found in our pattern book, Stash Busting with Three Yards Quilts. So the tools we need for this Bitty Bungalow The transfer method that I used for these Bitty Bungalows was directly onto the fabric. This is all freehand, and this is kind of like, mm, what inspires you? This is your method. It is as simple as drawing straight onto your fabric. These lines, not a huge, not a huge bold, but perfect for tracing. And let's say, mm, I really don't like what I just drew. It's completely okay. It is as simple as ironing it away. This pen disappears when you add heat. If you don't like your design, you can draw it straight on your fabric. If you want to create as you go and you don't have a particular design that you want to work specifically from, this transfer method is awesome. It is so forgiving. I chose to decorate this one as my first home. Just really simple using all of our stitches. This is a simple back stitch, but instead of creating on top of it, I just created a lot of really long different lines. You can see the variegated threads that I use and the lovely depth that it gives you and the complexity of the color. We have the same straight lines and this can just be as crazy as you want it. To make this a easy process for you, we have these pins also with our other transfer methods available at fabriccafe.com. One last tip on embroidering our blocks. Before we go, I want to talk to you about stabilizer on the backside of your embroidery. This is not our transfer stabilizer. This is tearaway or washaway stabilizer that we're going to be using on the back. If you are crossing seams with your embroidery, there's always a chance for some pooling, some tension to happen in our stitching. As you can see, there's a little movement right there. I should have used some stabilizer, some tearaway stabilizer behind this just to ensure that my blocks stay square through the embroidery process. Let's look at what these embroideries look like in our rendering. I've split them up and placed them throughout the quilt so you can see what it would look like scattering your embroidery across your whole quilt top versus side by side giving you the option of having a couple houses decorated. You do not have to embroider and highlight every single block. You might be thinking, should we put our whole quilt top together before we embroider? Personal preference, depending on the style of your embroidery. Over here, we have standalone one quilt block. It encapsulates and holds all of our embroidery right here. On the other hand, with our crystalline pattern, we cross lines. Our embroidery covers all of these blocks, all of these squares put together to create our surface area for an embroidery. No matter what method you choose, no matter what layout you choose, please make sure that you're finishing, zigzagging, or surgering your edges of either your blocks or your quilt tops to help stabilize your fabric to prevent fraying with all the handling that you're gonna be doing when you embroider. 
it is lots of movement, there's lots of touching, there's lots of handling. And so those zigzag stitches, those the serger stitches really help prevent our quilt from breaking down in the process of making this keepsake. So please keep that in mind while you're choosing your pattern, while you're choosing your blocks. Do you need to create the whole quilt top or can you create it as you go? while you're piecing. Let's talk about what happens when we send it off to the long arm. Now this is not a three yard quilt from Fabric Cafe. This is a quilt that I created for my daughter that incorporates a lot of the methods that we've discussed today. We have two different ideas when it comes to quilting after we've completed our embroidery. We can quilt straight over our embroidery. It really locks it in, it really secures it, it keeps even our stitches even more in place. With this block, I simply trace the outline of an already present design. Now with this block, I loved it, I wanted to accentuate, I wanted to add a fun texture, so I went through and I highlighted parts of this block and I chose to have it quilted externally around it, framing this embroidery. Both methods are great and both methods work in quilting right through or quilting around to create a highlight to your embroidery. I hope I empowered you and gave you some tools to start your embroidery journey. Remember in all of this and in creating, practice makes progress and there is such beauty in those quirky imperfections that we might see and in others, it is just straight beauty. Please challenge yourself and try new things. Happy creating with Charity and Fabric Cafe.